Because I swear to God, it doesn't matter how good a game is. The first cape you get is going to ruin your immersion in it. Every single f***ing time. Like, can we please just get together and decide that it's not okay to have shit clip through our clothes in every single game? Can we just, like, can we just get together as a, as a group and just be like, the time for this shit is done. We're better than this. We got we got to figure this out, y'all, as a group. Um. Oh my God, dude. I'm telling you, this is why. No, 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 people are saying it's really hard. That's why I'm saying there needs to be like a tech for it. Like they need they need to come out with a plug and play option, because <laughs> that exists. <laughs> I want on or off clothing clipping. On. Any game dev will tell you that's exactly how game dev works. Whenever you have a bug in a game, you make the option to turn it off and then you click the option off. That's how game dev works for every bug. Clothing clipping, make the option, clothing clipping on or off and then off. It's that easy. I'm a professional guys, it's that easy. Yep, there you go. Clothing in general, off, no clothes. Now everyone's naked, no. <laughs> so simple no but in like real talk i i do i there's got to be something that can be done maybe maybe it's like an unreal engine module or something there has to be some kind of thing that we that we can do or make standard to not have stuff just clip through itself all the time i feel like we we got to do better no clothes would fix the clipping issue that's true hey sometimes it's not about fixing the bug it's about getting around it and if every single character was naked in your game, where's the clipping for clothing issue? I mean, really, it's pretty smart if you think about it. Yep. That's that's it. I think we cracked the code. Whoa, you can fly? Oh, I don't like this guy. This guy's a little scary. Ow, he still hit me. Jeez, dude. Yeah, I don't like those guys. Mm -mm. Nope. Mm -hmm. You'll be playing Unreal Wukong after this? Yes. Why don't they do that normally? So... And, and as, as, as Barry was pointing out in the chat that will not be named, the, the real talk around clothing interacting is the fact that, that if you were to have it so all clothing was reactive to everything else, that's a huge amount of on-the-fly processing to be doing. Particularly when you're talking about like having the clothing react to the weaponry during animations. Um, like there's, there's like realistically, and the way that we do it currently these days, it's just far too resource intensive. Like it, fabric simulation is is not is not an easy thing. So the the point that I was trying to make earlier facetiously was that that it would be nice if there were some kind of low resource option or solution to this problem that we do not have a low cost or or good solution to currently. Yeah, because fabric simulation games is that, that's the reason we don't see it is is because it's so resource intensive and. It's hard. It's hard. To put it bluntly, it's hard. So we're just we're just not really there yet. I'm guessing like probably in Unreal Six or Unreal Seven or something. I'm guessing a feature eventually will probably be some kind of new technology to to make that coding less resource intensive. Maybe there's some AI stuff that could do it that they're playing with now. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but yeah, that's probably the next step for that stuff. And it's a ways off, most likely. One day. One day. It'll be nice when it gets here, though. That's for sure. It'll make a big deal. It'll make a big deal. Like, I can... I can... God. I was going to say, I could count the number of games on one hand that have, like, actual realistic fabric simulation. But I'm trying to think of any right now. That do it in, like, actual real time. 
I think, did they do that in RDR2? They had some pretty great fabric simulation in RDR2, but, um, hmm. wouldn't be surprised. Witcher, Witcher had a little bit, but I think it was, it was, uh, like, relatively fabricated. Yeah. <laughs> Star Citizen will have fabrication? That makes a lot of sense, considering the entire project is just a big fabrication. Ayo. Joking, of course. But, um, yeah, that's, uh, Star Citizen. You can't really ever sell Star Citizen for a feature. Um, it <laughs> I'm excited for Star Citizen, for the record. But I'm still going to make fun of how long it's taken to get here. I mean, you can't not at this point. Um, okay, let's see. What's this? Depletes all focus and deals additional damage. Oh, sure. Let's do that. Heck yeah, that could be good. Why didn't you break all the statues in the meditation place? Couldn't they summon someone? Nani. Uh, can 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 they? What? I will I will go check this. <laughs> I was not aware of that. Hmm. Am I actually excited for Star Citizen? I am. I funny enough, like it, it. I know I know that Star Citizen is kind of a meme for lots of reasons these days. But I'm somebody that like very loosely follows the progress of the alpha. And the game is making progress. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a million things to to yell at the Star Citizen devs for. Be it for complete management issues or resource squandering. Laundry list is, is massive. But what I don't think you can call Star Citizen, and I know this is going to make a lot of you angry. <laughs> what I don't think you can call Star Citizen is a scam. It's not a scam. And that's because they're trying if you look at the alphas and the betas, they're trying. There's constant updates. It's being built. They're working on it. Like, it's not a scam. The argument is shouldn't be, is it a scam or not? The argument should be, how bad are you guys at making games that it's taken this long? And you've gotten that much done. Which is a different argument than, is it a scam? They're not trying to scam you. They're just so not good at this that it may look like a scam, but it's not. It's not a scam. <laughs> like, they're not doing this to take advantage of you. They're just not great at what they do. So it's not, it's not incompetence. You can't say incompetence because we don't know what the problem is. We don't have the information. We don't know if it's a management problem. We don't know if it's a direction problem from the top down. We don't know if all the coders are just terrible at their jobs. We don't, we don't know if middle management is a problem. We, have, we don't know, so we can't say it's incompetence. We don't know. We don't know what the problem is. But what we do know is there's a problem. There's obviously a problem. And I think that is what people equate to the scam, is that they see there's a huge problem with it, and they go, oh, it's a scam because the game's not here and it's been 10 years. No, they're still working on the game. And if you look at the alphas, it's making progress. The game is making progress. Slowly, very slowly, but it is. So um, I think I think Star Citizen is a good example of what happens when your marketing team is one of the best in the industry and the rest of your team can't keep up. And that's Star Citizen in a nutshell. Yep. Like they're making so much money and selling so much stuff and like their marketing team deserves awards, Jesus. But I mean, the game should have been out like four years ago. So, like, I, it, it, you know, it's, it, and you can't really fault it. it. It's, you know, the scope creep has been a huge issue. The speed of development's been a huge issue. The tech issues have been a huge issue. Like, there's clearly, clearly major problems with the project. Um, but yeah, that's, I'm, funny enough, I mean, I'm, if they actually get it out to a point where it's half of the vision they've promised, it's going to be a cool game. <laughs> it's going to be a cool game. And I hope it gets here. I hope it actually gets done. And I hope to play it one day. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a thing, man. It's a thing. Okay, so unfortunately that did not summon a boss, but that's okay. I'd always rather double check. Billbox says, is it a scam? No. Was it aiming too high, making promises too big, and stretching out development for profits? Yes. 
Oh, so your so so your your argument would be that they're purposefully making the development long to get more money? Like they're like they're developing this slowly on purpose? I think I don't know if we, again, I don't know if we know enough to say that. I feel like I feel like I feel like yes, that absolutely could be a thing. That's the world we live in. But we don't we don't know enough to say that. Like I don't like I, I I would not say that. I would need a lot more information to comfortably say that. Yeah. And I would not comfortably say that now. Co is full on copium? I'm not copium, I'm being realistic. Waiting to get all the information before making a decision is not copium. And I hate that that's where we are these days. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. Like, please. <laughs> I love Ko's optimism. Uh, I mean, like, optimism, sure, but, you know, I think realism... Realism can bleed into optimism when you don't take things at face value and get all the information. So, like, you know, you can... you can When you don't have the info, you can be cynical or optimistic. And, and that's a decision we make. You can, you can, you know, seeing the best in people, that kind of thing, right? I, so yeah, I, I would argue that I don't, I would argue that I don't, taking an optimistic view, I don't think that the Star Citizen devs are doing anything nefarious. I would argue that I just think that they're having trouble with a huge game that they're having management issues with. That would be my vote. But, you know, maybe I'll get information one day that'll make me change my decision. And I will always be open to that information. Dang it. That's just rude. Okay. And then he just landed and punched me in the face. Of course. Right. <sighs> Sigh. Why would you play that game anyway? Star Citizen? Because, I mean... Like it, it when it works, it looks kind of cool. Yeah. No, man. I mean, I've I've watched people play a lot of it. When when it works, it looks kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Do I think this game is the best game of the year? Nope. I think it's a great game, though. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Isn't Star Citizen super pay to win? That's an entirely different discussion, but. Like I, I'm, maybe it all depends on on how they're doing the 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 1.0 server infrastructure. But the TLDR is maybe it might be one of the most pay-to-win games we've ever seen, <laughs> potentially. Um, but we'll have to see. It all it all depends on how they do the servers and stuff. What's my game of the year? Uh, I don't know yet. I I don't really talk about my game of the year until the end of the year. I've had I've been doing this a long time, and there's been many years where like my game of the year has come in November. Um, so I, I don't really talk about my game of the year until the end of the year. I also, for people asking me about this game, I don't ever make a game or say a game is my game of the year until I'm finished with it. Like, I don't understand how anyone could ever say that a, a game is your game of the year without having finished it. You don't know how it ends. You don't know how long it is. You don't know if you're going to feel the same way. So I, I never, I never even really suggest a game is going to be my game of the year until I'm done with it. Because all that factors into my decision. Also, Game of the Year is directly comparable to other games out that year. So, that's also a big factor. Mm -hmm. uh, nope, PoE 2 could not be the Game of the Year. We don't, we don't do early access. We don't do expansions, and we don't do early access in our Game of the Year list. We keep those in different categories for simplicity. So, what I'm trying to say is PoE 2 will be my Game of the Year next year. Am I going to play Space Marine 2? Oh, hell yes. I can't wait for Space Marine 2. Yeah, dude, we've had some great games this year. We've had some really good games this year, especially early. Dunk! 
Feels good, man. Beautiful. Thank you, Tech Theos. Appreciate you, bud. Am I excited for KCD2? I am not only excited for KCD2, but I am getting stupid excited to replay KCD1 again. Like, we're going to have to start that pretty soon. Uh, someone was on the uh, CoCarnage Reddit last night asking about that. I need to reply to that thread. Um, but yeah, yeah, we are we are definitely going to be replaying KCD1 and planning a big run of KCD2. Yes. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm letting people know. Uh, ever since I got my new phone a little bit ago, I have actually set it up so I get notifications and stuff on the CoCarnage subreddit. I, I know there's been like this little active community there for years and I've not really like, I, and I, you know, I sometimes reply like once every few months kind of thing. But ever since I, I get all the notifications on my phone, I'm actually like responding to and answering things in the Reddit. People are asking questions. I try to respond to them. Um, if you see anything funny you want me to see, feel free to post in there. I'll probably see it because I get notifications when things are posted in there. So you guys have been asking me for years to pay more attention to that. Well, I'm paying more attention to it. So if any of you guys are Redditors, I, uh, I will be over there. Mm -mm. Giving it the old college try and seeing how we like it. Oop. Cool. Okay. And this area is pretty. Mm. How do you handle a big playthrough like KCD2 with a game like Avowed coming out only seven days later? Uh, we normally do like all day streams for the big game that comes out first. And then when we get to the second game, we switch the morning stream and afternoon stream. And I play mornings of the newer game and afternoons of the, the later game. And before, if a third game came out, I would then start utilizing the cozy stream, our evening stream. But I'm not doing the cozies right now because life takes precedence. So yeah, but soon when those come back, then we'll, you know, if we ever have three big playthroughs going at once, then we, we generally do a morning, afternoon and cozy. Mm -hmm. About going to be hot. I need to watch the most recent gameplay stuff. Um, in fact, maybe we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that at some point in the future. I don't know if we'll do that today. Maybe we'll do that today. We'll see. Is this game hard like Dark Souls? No, no. This game, this game is an easier God of War. Is what I would say. It, it is. It is. And it, it is easier than like Elden Ring and stuff, and it plays much more like God of War than Dark Souls. Yep. Uh, we can't do this again, can we? And we need a knot of the voidness. Okay. Oh, hey, Zarin. No, you're good, buddy. You're totally good. Yeah, I appreciate it. So, uh, Zarin and, and anyone else, the what I what I generally recommend if you want to give me tips for the games for backseating, which we welcome here, we welcome backseat gaming. But the best thing you can do is let me get up to the point where the item is, and if you see me miss it or walking away, that's the best time to tell me about it. <laughs> like when I'm still in the area and I've obviously missed it, that is the best the best time to be like, hey, before you leave, don't forget to go. You know, like that's the best time. So like right here, for instance, you see me going this way, and if the thing I want is over here, <laughs> great time to let me know, yeah. Speaking of which, I have no idea where I'm supposed to go right now. Do I go here, or do I go that way? Uh, let's go this way, okay. KCD2 is Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. Thank you, Nostradamus. I, prob I probably should have said that earlier. I apologize, thank you. KCD2 equals Kingdom Come. Deliverance 2 for anyone still wondering. Thank you, thank you. I've been following the story of this game? Barely. 
barely. They, they, one of my biggest issues with the game is that they do not do a good job of telling the story. They, they kind of do a little bit, um, but it's the kind of thing where if you miss a sentence or two, then you have no idea what's going on, like at all. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's not very uh, connected. I feel, I feel like it's more kind of Elden Ringy, where for me at least, the real joy of this game is coming from like exploring the environments, seeing all the weird stuff, seeing all the boss designs and things. Like it, for me, I'm playing this like Elden Ring, and it's fine. You know, I'm not, I'm not going for any story elements. I'm not really paying attention to the story much at all. Um, and it's fine. It's, it's, it's just fine. Yeah. Boki with the 69 months, and he says, finally. <laughs> This is a big arena chat. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I guess we'll go use, the, oh, who are these people? Oh, you're not people, what are you? Oh, you're like knocked over. Okay. okay, what am I doing here? Go? Uh-oh. Oh, for the record, I'm fully aware that this game is based on a journey to the West. However, I have never read that story. So I was under the assumption that this game was going to be telling us that story a lot more. But instead, what I feel like it's doing is Journey to the West is the blueprint of the lore of this game. So it's it's not that they're telling the story of Journey to the West, it's that Journey to the West is the lore foundation of what this game is based on. But they are not telling that story in this. This is this is like a different character, a different, I think it's even a different time period. Um, so it's like, yeah. This is, a lot of people thought that this game was a journey to the West. It is not. It's basically a fan fiction. Uh, well, I, I wasn't going to say it, but. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. Okay, so before we go too much in this area... Let's go back to here and let's go the other direction and see where that goes. Oh, cool. We got a Wukong thoughts command. So if you're wanting, if you're wanting my thoughts on Wukong, we now have the Wukong thoughts command. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see what this way is. Because up is how we got to the... Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no. This is the way that we went. Okay, so the bridge took us to the tower. So let's go the other way. Lumpy clumps. I think that's most likely the most accurate. Yeah. In my head cannon. This game is actually based on Planet of the Apes, and I'm waiting to see the Statue of Liberty in the sand. Yep. I think that's accurate. going we can go up there or over here Dude, this this area is massive There's 
someone behind me. Okay. More weapon stuff. Great. Sorry, bad boy. Okay, so where is this? going down. Alright. That's a lot, dude. PC or console? Uh, for me, in all cases, PC. Yeah, I, I only use a console if I have to. Um, but that's, you know, it all depends. That The answer PC or console is completely dependent on what PC do you have available. I have some good PCs, so I always prefer PC, but, you know, it, it, it all, that, the answer to that question is dependent on the person asking. Always up to personal preference. Mm -hmm. Some people strongly prefer playing on a TV, which you can do on a PC, but consoles are made for that. So, like, for just chilling on the couch and, and relaxing, I'd probably prefer a console. Much easier to deal with than a PC and getting it all hooked up and everything. Mm hmm We really need to go back and talk to our gourd guy, our gourd bro. Shadow Avatar says, I've always, always been a PC man. Me too. Me too. I, I've had PCs my whole life in areas where I couldn't afford consoles, weirdly enough. Because um, I built my own PCs so I could spend smaller amounts of money to do smaller upgrades than saving up and getting like a, a big PC or a big console. Excuse me. So, yep. I've been building PCs since uh, 10 years old, pretty much. Alright, so that goes back up to the top, but we want to kind of finish exploring this area. I think like says 10? Yeah, I was a I was a pretty sheltered kid. Mm-hmm. I grew up in an environment where I was like the only kid that liked video games, but I really, really liked video games. So, you know, I, I just kinda had to make that work by myself. And one part of that was learning to build machines early so I could actually f afford a computer. Mm hmm. I worked for my mom and I saved up and I got like a really bobo computer, one that could just run uh, some really basic things. And then uh, for EverQuest, I had to work to get some, uh, some, some minor, minor upgrades so I could actually play that. And like, yeah, all sorts of little things. Mm hmm. 90s was hard for gamers. Hard for PC gamers, I would say. Yeah. How am I liking Wukong? Uh, fun. Overall, I'm really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. A very solid ARPG. Absolutely. Oh, first games I played ever, funny enough, were on a Mac. Uh, my, my dad is, is a graphic... What well, was? Uh, a graphic artist. He... Um, all sorts of really good graphic stuff. For all sorts of different companies. But he was Mac. So my, my first games were Mac, funny enough. Old, 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 like, Apple II stuff. Yep. Dark Castle. 3x3. Three three. Daedalus. Oh, man. Love that ish. I have a Dark Castle shirt. <laughs> MDK? Oh, God. That was a little bit later, but yeah. Rocket Jockeys, MDK. 
Fallout 1. That was around the time of Fallout 1. And I'll, I'll never forget the first time I played Fallout 1. It was like, I think it was the demo. I think it was like the Mac demo or something. And I remember playing Fallout 1 and being like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I want my entire life to be about this. <laughs> Just this. Like, this is the coolest thing I have ever seen in my life. I remember, I remember vividly, because it was the first time I'd ever seen one that looked like that. And I remember looking at the minigun in the Fallout 1 demo and being like, why does that gun have so many barrels? And my dad was like, because it fires so fast that the barrels get so hot that they have to rotate. And I was just like, that is the coolest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> that, that actually exists. That's a thing. Oh my God. That is so cool. <laughs> Pretty fun. Mm-hmm. 